Kalman systems, where, as we all know, they are they have a complex deployment. We are normally, or or we can be doing a deployment that can take about six months, one year, to have the service running and everything. They are monolithic, which is the other uh, main disadvantages that have the the, man, the traditional man systems, and also they are hard coded. In some cases, they have a complex logic and they are difficult to configure. So, but now, and following the presentations this morning, that we have uh, new business needs with the uh, content supply change, new challenges, and everything. So we have to um, uh, adapt these man systems to be able to be deployed quickly, to be attending to new online services, to be able to adapt quickly to all these new requirements and have one approach which is different, which is a continuous improvement and continuous deployment. But how all of this applies to the, um, to the um, let's say, to the traditional man system. So I've been in the, um, in the, well, in the, um, in the market for about 20 years, developing from the beginning some modules of the, of the software that we have, and we are facing this situation quite often, which is uh, when is the goal like date? That normally they say now it can be in, a, in one month to be adding a new service or something. And also for the nonlinear services, uh, delivering content to, the, to some platforms and everything, we have to be deploying things very quick. So what, is, what can happen if the platform is not prepared? is that you start with a very nice painting and at the end you finish with uh, Frankenstein because what you have deployed is not, you have to be adapting something very quick and then you have a very nice system but finally you end up in, a, in a something which is not uh, really good finished. So what is the main evolution? And this is something that we've been discussing this morning with AWS and with, other, with the other vendors. The main uh, difference when you are deploying something that has to be in the cloud is the difference between cloud ready and cloud nat nat native. It is a conceptual change and we need to re-architecture the system. There are many parameters and many things that are, that are affecting these, uh, these decisions, but I can say that the main one is that in the traditional applications, we have the, well, the user interface, the workflow orchestration system or everything, we have some services which are running here, but there is a central database which is, let's say, keeping the information of all of them. If we, if we want to go into a microservice approach, what we have to do is to break these services so that they are in the independent and each one has its own database so there is not a single point of failure or a single um, element that all of them depend on, on that one. So what are the three main areas that we will have to be paying attention to be evolving this uh, MAN system? The first one is the infrastructure. So we have to be able to deploy the, the platform in the cloud. So of course, it has to be virtualized. We need to be adapting the, the servers where our applications are running to a specific instances from AWS, from Microsoft, from Google, from, from the different platforms. In some cases, um, we have to be migrating from a one SQL to a non-SQL database, depending on, the, on how we want to be evolving the, the platform. The storage, we need to forget about the traditional uh, block-based storage, and we have to be going into, a, um, into an object-based storage, in most of the cases, for example, as the S3. And also we have to think about the security, which is one of the key things and concerns of the broadcaster when they are moving into the cloud. Then we have also to do some architectural changes. The main one is what I mentioned before about the microservices and the independency of them for not to have a single central uh, point, which is the database that all, of, all, all the modules and everything depends on them. And also we need to do some functional changes to be able to deploy the new services and the, the new modul modules quite quick, quite quick. And also, we can take advantage, advantage, and that was one of the um, points that it, it uh, arises this morning, is how to be using services from multiple clouds. So it doesn't mean that we are going to be moving all the content to the other cloud, but maybe we can take advantage of integrating um, some services from other clouds 
only moving the media or the thing that we need to be taking uh, this specific feature of, uh, of, um, of the cloud. So, but also we have to uh, bear in mind that in broadcast we have some specific needs because sometimes when, when we meet to with uh, some non-broadcast uh, software vendors, they think that everything is very easy, that the only thing you have to do is to re-architecture the, the, the solution, put in the cloud, and that's it. But the, problem, the main problem we have is to be moving the media, which is something that we were discussing before, to be efficient, because sometimes we need to be offering new services and we have to be engaging to our, to our customers with uh, more content, with more things to be producing more, more, much more things. We need to be adapting this uh, service to the different needs. And of course, we need to be able to deploy or to support multiple, multiple use cases that can be full in the cloud or in a hybrid cloud where it can be also multi-site because we have different uh, silos or different places that are producing different media or different content and they all have to be um, in sync between, between one with the other. So, one possible approach that we have done is to be uh, using what we call, a, or designing what we call a catalog of services. In this catalog of, ser of services, we have a two levels approach. So one is to be using core services where we have the micro services of the content management um, in the MAM, another one for the workflow management, another one for the storage management, and then what we put on the top of them are like a set of building blocks that will be used in that services to be able to deploy new service lines or new services in the cloud very easy. And these services are the ones which are typically used in the in broadcast, which is ingesting files, doing QC, editing, versioning, delivery, the typical task that we that you know. So uh, for the core services, I'm going to go yeah very almost quick on them. So as I said before, they need to be self-contained and uh, some samples of these core services can be, the, for example, for the content management, the um, metadata service that will be keeping all the metadata which is uh, linked to the different content, search this me across this metadata in multiple sites and everything, indexing the metadata, streaming, ACLs, if we want to be controlling obviously the access to the different content, housekeeping, for the workflow management services, all the engine and everything which is um, executing the workflows, connectors, if we want to be integrating with different third party elements or, or with um, other tools which are deployed in the cloud to be transforming the media, to be notifying to, the, to, to other systems or anything, the engine and then the media processing and everything. And for the storage, the same thing is to have different adapters and different connectors to be able to be integrating with the different technologies that we can have either in the cloud or even on-prems because we have a hybrid approach. The building blocks, as I mentioned before, is another level of abstraction that will give us the possibility to deploy new services very quick, which are tailored for by broadcast. So these services, can be or are usually the what I mentioned before, ingest, QC, and all, all these kind of things. And if we go through through some of them, for example, here we have the ingest service, which is using ma other microservices of the platform, the quality control, which is using other services, the editing, archival, publishing, and all of them. I think it is, I think it's probably No, I think it's, yeah, no, it's running out of battery, the laptop. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So if we go to the ingest building block, so in this case, the what we have to define are very simple and straightforward parameters as the input, the source files that we're going to be ingesting, uh, that can be video, audio, subtitles, a package, a folder, anything which is going to be ingested in the MAM. The output will be the ingested content in the MAM using one universal unique ID or, or any other thing. 
And the parameters, we can define which are the supported formats and which is our mesnine format in case that we want to be transforming the content into a mesnine format if needed. File naming conventions to be automatically linking this content with the metadata that might came from a traffic system, from or from from other any other system, any other uh, business management system. And then we can also configure some notifications, which is to another system to say that we have ingested the content and it works. So this is our self-contained ingest block. And this block is using all these microservices to be searching in the MAM, updating the metadata, indexing the already ingested content, set up the access control list of that content, and for the workflows to be um, executing all the workflow and all the steps that we need to be ingest that we need to be ingesting the content. Quality control is similar, so in this case it is the same thing, self-contained. We pass the UUID of the content, we have one output which is how it was the, the quality control, if it was objected, ad, a, accepted, rejected, needs editorial, and then the parameters can, that can be the automatic QC system, the test plan, what can we do in case that the automatic QC fails, if we want someone to be inspecting the content and taking manual decisions, and the same thing, the quality control uh, result that can be notified on another system. The way to implement it can be something like this. So I have here my microservices, I have here my application, application layer, and I put here the clip metadata using this microservice, I put here my player using the streaming services, and here I have the QC report or all the failures and everything that has been detected in this part of the, of the screen, and one operator can take the decision of accept or reject the content. Same thing, for example, for the editing. If we need to send a content for editing to create a new version or to do any other thing, so it's um, another, another self-contained building block. Publishing, if we want to be delivering the content to any other non-linear platform from the cloud, we can do it. And also, we need to pass the UUID. The, out, the, the output will be the status of the delivery. And then we can define as parameters everything that we need to be delivering with the content. If we need to be delivering also the video, audio, subtitles, if we want to be generating, for example, a package for Netflix or a cable apps package or any other thing, and what transformations we need to be doing in the case that we want to be adding automatically leader insertions or if we want to be uh, adding the localization in the output or anything that we need for that specific destination but something as a, as, a, um, as a block, which is self-contained. So how do I deploy my new service? So I need to take some architectural decisions, which is if it is going to be cloud, hybrid, and also hybrid with multiple locations. What are the core, uh, or how I'm going to be dimensioning the core MAM the, with uh, regards on, on the number of users, streaming services, the incoming media, and which building blocks I'm going to be using for that. So what are the benefits? The rapid deployment, that I can be very quick assembling a new service with the blocks and the microservices that I have, the elasticity, the measurement and predictability, flexibility, and the evolution for the new upgrades. So if we see it here, how it will work. So here I have all, me, all my microservices, so I can be scaling the system if I need more search power by spinning up new microservices for searching, or for streaming, for example, or the VPN engine, if I want to be executing more processes in the, um, because we need to, do, to be doing more tasks. And also, if I need to upgrade, for example, the indexer, because we have uh, some new features on the housekeeping module, I can do it without affecting the other modules. So this is the, 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 the traditional or the, or the normal approach for the, for the microservices. So I have two cases uh, study that we've been doing for, for some customers, that, um, which are, one is this one, which is a hybrid cloud approach in Norway, in NRK, that we have 12 sites. Um, the core MAM is dimensioned to be supporting 500 concurrent users. It is deployed in a private cloud of, of NRK, and we are using these building blocks. And we have the integration in this case with the Sam Quantel 
to be doing all the distribute production of all the news across all the different sites and publishing to some of the linear nonlinear platforms that they have there. So the way it is architecture is they have the private cloud where we have de uh, deployed there all the core microservices of the MAM and we have different nodes that they have a local storage and the only the microservices that we need to be managing the local storage and the transformation that has to be done locally. So the users can search here. The MAM is aware of the location of the content in all the sites. So if you want to be editing in this site and the content is in another, the system will automatically send the content to the other side and will publish in the PAM. And also we have the integration with Quantel and we have the um, reference. If someone is searching for a content, we know that it is in one of the Quantel islands and we're able to move that content from one node to the other. So that's a hybrid cloud implementation. The other one is, uh, I, I cannot say the name of the customer because it is under NDA, but it is uh, deployed in AWS and we are using the native S S3 um, storage from AWS. So in this case, we have uh, 100 concurrent connected users. We have the ingest QC and publishing and the business case is basically they are producing the content from the studios. They are archiving everything in AWS. They are doing the localization and the dubbing and, the, and creating the different versions in the cloud and they are delivering to 50 different destinations all across the, the world, in Europe, in here in the US, in Asia. And, um, and the beauty of this is that all the editing is done here. The validation and aggregation of the audio tracks and the leader insertions and everything which is, um, which is added depending on the destination is being done in the cloud. And the triggering the deliveries is also being done in the cloud for the business management system that they have, which is the one which is triggering the delivery to the different destinations. So what are the conclusions? Um, that the, there is a one architectural change if we want to be deploying a MAM in the cloud, which is, um, and we have to take some important decisions on how to be re-architecture in the system. It is important also to distinguish between something which is cloud ready that means that you can deploy your platform in the cloud and something which is cloud native, which is that you take all the benefits of the cloud regarding the storage, the elasticity, the resilience and everything from the cloud. And also um, this is important is to be in the case of, the, of our business, which is broadcast, is to have this kind of uh, services which are adapted to the operation that we all have, which is the, the typical ingest, QC, editing, et cetera. And also mm, the flexibility, because now with, uh, as we need to be providing a lot of content for different destinations the, the, um, and, the, and, the, uh, and the need change very fast, we need to be flexible to be providing this kind of uh, services. And that's it. I don't know if you have any questions. Yes. Um, in the second example where you're doing most of the work in on Amazon Web Services, um, how much of that was using their natively provided applications and how much is your application running on their service servers? Well, in that case, the, um, what they, well, the use case is to be reducing all the localization tasks for the different languages. They are distributing in about, I, I think they are 15 different languages. And so all the operation of the of validating the audio tracks, putting in sync the audio with the video, validating the subtitles and everything is being done in AWS. Right, but is it, is it are there, are, is it TDL applications that you're running on in AWS the servers or are you using their natively supplied applications like, like they showed us this morning? No, we are, we are, they are using our applications. Could you go back to the other slide? Yes. Yeah. The, uh, the stack. Yeah. So here what we have done is, uh, well, we are using the EC2 instances of AWS, and what we have done is to deploy our microservices in there. There are other techniques that can be used, is, is to have like, a, with the containers, to have like a layer 
which allows you to deploy the doc the, these containers in different cloud technologies, which was uh, another of the things that were discussed today. But we are using our own services. So it's hosting, you're, you're getting uh, Amazon Web Services to basically have uh, infrastructure and platform as a service. Yes. Cloud. Essentially, yes. platform as a service in which your yes. instances, yes. containers, and, and microservices are yes. running. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Okay. All right, so we're going to hear from uh, Regis Andre uh, from Avid, micing up right now. I would say he needs.